Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Edgetone Studios. In this installment of my console restoration video, it's been a couple months and a lot of that was waiting for a tech to show up, but I did do some work on my own while uh, getting going. So let's get started and see what I got up to. So while I was waiting for the tech to show up or get back to me, I began working on an extension board for the back of the console. So my plan was to have the meter bridge extend back far enough that my Amphions and my mix cubes could sit right on the meter bridge. And I would also have the ability to clamp my monitor stand to the back of that and just have space for it to uh, really work in the studio. So with a bit of routing and a bit of measuring and a couple brackets, I was quickly able to put together a board for that. Okay, so I just finished making a extended board for the back of the console. So this is uh, made from pine, not oak, just because it was cheap. I'm going to stain it the same color. Hopefully it'll come out really similar. But that's going to be big enough to hold my speakers on the meter bridge and... If you saw the stop motion, you see that it's just got brackets underneath and basically these just slide in. So now that this is bolted down, it slide in and it holds tight. Might need a bit of shimming because it's wiggling just a bit there. I don't want it to wiggle at all. So hopefully that will uh, work for the meter bridge. Okay, we're doing remote diagnosis. So what we've done right now is I powered the unit on with only... 26 channel strips in, let it run for a good 20 minutes, and then turned it off and put all 36 back in. And as you can see, I'm getting my proper voltage lights coming up there, but I also get signal on all the send meters. It's just kind of this high pitch hiss. It's not actually coming from any of the sends. Uh, that just happens when there's too many boards in the chassis. Currently, we've got the master fader disconnected. That was part of our testing. I'll put that back and then maybe I'll pull the comms module and just see how that looks. Okay, now I've got the master fader reconnected again. And it's the same issue. The board powers up. You see the lights come up slowly. Obviously, after there's been a load on for a while, it comes up slower than when I just flick it on from cold for some reason. Not sure about that. Okay, now I've taken out the uh, comms module. I didn't think that would have any difference of effect, but I was correct. It did not. Okay, now I have taken out another module. This is called the Mod Master, which is basically all the sins. Uh, same issue. Still getting power, but I got all these send meters coming on, so don't know why. And now I've pulled out the uh, monitor module, and same issue. It's not being caused by one of those modules. We'll find it. Okay, now I am taking out faders in groups of four just to speed things up. See if that makes a difference. Once I get down to about 26, that'll be about where the problem was starting in the first place. So. Okay, I've taken out down to 24 faders and when I powered on, the send lights did not, well, they lit up for a second and immediately went off. So now I'll start a re installing faders and see what happens. Okay. 25 faders, the send meters are off, but watch if I power off and on. So power it off for a sec and then watch the send meters when I power it on. Oh, this time they came on and stayed on. The last time they came on and immediately went off. So I'll try it with 24. I'm about to turn things on with only 24 faders in. We'll see what happens on those said lights. Ah, same thing, they're staying on. Weird. Some, sometimes they're off, sometimes they're on. Definitely off when I've had less than 27 channel strips in so it still seems to be channel strip related okay let's try again this time with all the modules back in and the master fader reconnected so let me get that lined up 
Oh, this time I'm getting the static. Oh, there it comes. Same issue. Okay, now I'll try channel strips. Okay, I've pulled out channels down to 25. Everything's off, I haven't powered it on yet. And let's see if what I previously found is still true, that at this level, everything will come up fine. There's no problem with this many channel strips. So here comes the power in a sec. Let's get this set up. And look at that, it comes up clean. And I could put them back until it hits 27 again and it'll start doing that. So I don't see the point yet. Okay, I've got console strips in going the other direction now. I actually have 27 in, which is one more than I can get going the other direction. And the lights aren't coming on, I'm not hearing that sound. And then if I power this down, add the next module. And then power it back up again the send meters come on and I'm not getting that sound, but the send meters are coming on. Okay, now I've got all 36 channels in. The light behavior stayed pretty well the same, except for one powering on. You'll see that it takes a minute or a few seconds for the current to get up to plus 18 and minus 18, the top two lights there, so. Um, obviously that doesn't do that with the less modules in. Okay, now I have audio running through the system and the fader is in, as far as I know, and I've got no sound. My speakers are on. I double checked the connection at the back. So I think with this situation going on, I can't get sound out of the unit. So it's weird. Okay, still troubleshooting with 27 strips in. I moved it over to see if I was getting sound from the next four strips. I'm not, but interestingly, as I turn the power off, you hear the sound for a second. So I'll take one module out and see what happens. Okay, not sure what's going on here, but I don't have signal coming through one and four now. I've got everything on the board. I do have sound, uh, but previously I was just on five to eight and nothing was coming through seven, which would be the same as what's number three. Well, that's all the troubleshooting I did of console modules. I was still waiting on the tech and I found that a queen size sheet was the perfect cover to keep the MXP clean. And then soon the LED replacement bulbs I'd ordered from a fellow in Europe came through. And they looked a lot better than the incandescents that had been in there. And we're going to last a lot longer. Okay, console update coming to you. So I just had my uh, tech here today, Mickey. And he, uh, first of all, is a fantastic uh, gentleman who knows a ton of stuff. And we did power supply. And we took it apart. And we took a look at some of the schematics. And what we found here was... This thing was jumpered up for uh, 108 to 126 input voltage. So we moved these taps over, these connections over to be 117 to 136, and then we were able to get all the modules on and the power running. However, it's still a slow power up, so we were concerned about the capacitors. So we tested the capacitors and they are not holding a charge at all. So we're looking into replacements of these three gigantic capacitors. You see them there, 3,500 MFD. They are rated up to 85 degrees Celsius. These things are insane. So those are on order. Uh, that's fixed the power supply issue. I've got new LED lights in the mute buttons. I've got a couple more modules on the way. I just got my second audio interface showed up. It's not in there yet. Uh, but in general, we've uh, made some big progress. And now I'm just waiting on parts and then there'll be some more troubleshooting. And maybe we'll be getting close to calibration soon. So pretty excited. Okay, I've got my replacement uh, computer assisted uh, fader boards and I've put them in the system. So there they are now. Currently the system is off. I've already tested this, so I didn't want to have to try and hold the camera while seeing th if things are going to burn. So while I flip that on, 
look up there, see all the lights come on. And after a few seconds of initializing, they go off. And then all of these faders, except for a few, seem to be initialized. This one's flicking away, probably something going on there. And then that one's just completely dead on the LED there. Oh, this one just flipped to up instead of down. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing that. This one's kind of got all sorts of lights on. But progress. So I'm waiting on those capacitors. The replacements are on order, should be in next week. Then I'll get all the power going to the system. And uh, I don't know if there's much I can do with the automation system. Um, I know that the IR is working on the remote, but punching buttons doesn't do much and I don't have the manual for that. So that'll be a next, next step. So it's looking good. Okay, I've got the new capacitors now. They've just come in and uh, let me show them to you. So here are the old capacitors. 3500. 3,500 microfarads, and here are the new capacitors. Look at the size difference here. So these are 3,800 microfarads, and they're rated 50 VDC, and these ones are rated 40 WVDC. I'm not sure I know the difference, but this is what the tech said to get. So we're going to be replacing those into this power supply and then seeing how the board lights up. Okay, let's do this. Well, I edited this uh, time lapse significantly because it was a real pain to get down into there and get these bolts connected. But eventually I was able to get all three of these capacitors back into their original locations and grounded the right way. Okay, that was a pain, but I got the capacitors in now. So there you can see they're much shorter than the old ones. But they fit, and thankfully they were shorter because it was really hard to get in and get those screws through the holes with the bolts and not move, removing anything else from the power supply. So I'm going to put the lid back on, and we're going to power this thing up and see what happens. Okay, about to power this up for the first time with new capacitors in it. We did have it working with the power settings change for the input, so here we go. Well, that's quite the sound. It's probably the capacitors charging up. Yeah, that's not good. Back to said drawing board. Well, while I took off for Gen Con Indianapolis to hang out with 70,000 of my closest friends, and play games like miniature pod racing and monsters destroying cities and Gaslands, which is post-apocalyptic car racing and more. I had dropped off the power supply with my local tech, Pierre, and he was going to work on seeing if he could solve it. So I hung out with the costume crazies and Sauron beating up kids and was just in this massive place. I picked up this great game called Successors, which is a long historical strategy game. And I found Rush Pinball. Yeah, Rush Pinball. Here we are at the Gen Con, Lucas Oil Stadium, massive, giant, holy cow, is this place ever big? How can anybody ever explain it? Look at this man, he's shocked. Look at those people, can I zoom in on them? Yes, I can. They're way down there. They're like ants. Ants, I tell you. Ants. So, so few of them now, but there were so many. Oh, there they all are. Look at them gaming away. Woo. Mighty big. Okay, I'm back in the garage after several weeks. I've been away, and my power supply has been repaired by the tech. So when I flip it around here, there's the power supply plugged in. I've been here before. Turning the board on for the first time. Let's see what happens. Let's watch up there. And beauty, straight on. No issues, no hum. Just the slightest of hums. Probably can't hear it over the 
incandescent or the uh, bulbs in the studio. So looking pretty good. Everything's lighting up. Now I'll have to do some audio tests, but I'll leave that running for a bit. That lights on pretty well everywhere. Sweet. Let's see if any of these. Yeah, that one's still bad, but all these peak lights come on. That's always weird. Okay. I guess that's that. I got it done. Next steps. Okay, back to console stuff. I've picked up myself a uh, oscilloscope, uh, just a cheap digital one, and a multimeter. So this is the uh, Fenusi 1014D, and it's you know just a basic digital multimeter. It has a signal generator. Doesn't seem like it's possible to change the um, uh, output. Um, uh, power of the signal generator so that was a bit annoying and I've got a little multimeter here and I've been working through trying to figure out the console maintenance and calibration and going step by step so first thing I'm supposed to do is put that card on an extender module I don't have an extender module so I'm just leaving things out so I can reach in there and then after that, select one kilohertz oscillator and set the level to plus four dBm while monitoring the oscillator with an AC voltmeter and set the rotary channel fader for the zero position. So basically what that's talking about is you send the oscillator to the tracks, you turn it on to 10K or times 10 and put it at 100 so it becomes 1,000. And I'm monitoring the oscillator out and from what I can figure, I think it's 1.23 volts is the same as plus four dBm, but I could be totally wrong on that. And I'm hoping that later today I'm having a call with another tech who's worked on these boards before is gonna help me through it. So that's stage one. Okay, after uh, getting that, I'm supposed to monitor the channel line output at the patch bay with an oscilloscope, adjust RV10 for best symmetry, and when I do that, I will show you what it looks like. There's the uh, oscilloscope. Uh, and the symmetry, as far as I understand, is how much it goes up and down above the center line so that when you adjust this RV10, which you'll see on here is this little guy right there. So that's a variable resistor 10. So when I've done that on there, this thing doesn't move. I've moved it side to side. That just stays there. So again, not quite sure what I'm doing, but I'm trying that part out. So I got through that step. And then it's the VCA adjustment. So this whole module here is the VCA. It took me a long time to find. I was able to see uh, RV3 here. That was easy. I didn't realize this was a variable resistor 2, this little thing here. So that's RV2 and there's also RV1. So... With this console, there's three different VCAs possible, and I figured out that mine is most likely this one here, the DBX202X VCA, and that's simply because it does mention the RV2 and the RV3, and the other ones don't mention those resistors. So I'll show what I can get on there and where I'm lost, and hopefully maybe the tech will help me later today. Okay, I'm not sure how well this will work, but I've zoomed in on the what I'm supposed to be doing here. So step one is to move the fader to minimum position, which I've done. Connect pin four of J1 to ground. So that's right down here. Hopefully my hand won't be too far on the way. And with that connected to ground, I'm supposed to measure the or just RV2 for a reading of 12.10 VDC on pin one of this here. So when I put that there, you can see I've already adjusted that for 12.10, which is all great. And then I flip the instructions and it says move the fader to its maximum position. So I do that and um, adjust RV3 for a reading of 0.6 VDC of pin one. Now the interesting thing is I've tried to do this and that is not the right range. 
it's 6, not 0.6. So either I got a decimal place off on one of these things or the printing is wrong. Uh, there is another document I should look at that maybe I'll print out that goes through these same things. Okay, but the uh, next thing it talks about here is that it says to move the fader to minus 30. And that just seems like a weird place to put it because minus 30 is just a guess in here, right? It's about there. And after going to minus 30, it says confirm a reading of 4.36 VDC at pin 1. And if not obtainable, repeat these steps. Well, it's not obtainable. I've tried that. That doesn't come out anywhere near that. So, so either these instructions are wrong, um, or the numbers are wrong, or I really don't know what I'm doing, which is often the case, although I haven't quite destroyed anything yet. Caused some, caused some uh, brief moments of terror, but nothing uh, destroyed. So um, yeah, hopefully Zach, who's this fellow from Washington State, is going to call me later today, talk me through a few things, maybe help me figure out the calibration. Um, the other thing I'm really going to need is you're supposed to be an extender card that you put in so that this, this whole thing sits way above uh, so that you can have all the modules in and adjust at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to try and find uh, a male version of this uh slot and a female version that can attach to a ribbon cable and make ribbon cable attachments so that I could lay the boards out and adjust them that way. Still got to figure out exactly which uh, LEDs to get for the back there. I've still got the phase meter to repair and then there's each of these modules is pretty good shape but some of them have little problems so once I've identified all those and got calibrated then I might be at the point where I can consider moving this into the studio. Okay, so after talking to Zach, I sorted out a few things. Uh, I've set this up for a better view of the recording. So between the two bulletins I have, one is the Sony official bulletin, and the other one is this uh, um, document that was on the Sony forums for the MXP. Um, in one case, it says it should be 12.16 volt output at IC 200 pin one. The other one says should be 12.1. 12.1 seems to work better for uh, the documentation. So again, I've grounded that first pin uh, when I touch pin one here. Whoops, uh, I gotta set the fader at zero. Touch pin one and I get 12.1. And then I'm supposed to um, confirm that there's uh, 5.3 output at pin seven on DBX. 202X, and that ends up being this pin right here, which is not labeled on this side anywhere. So I re required uh, Zach's help to find that. And right now I find that's 5.35, and it's saying it should be 5.3, so that's pretty good. And then uh, if I put the fader up to max and check pin one, this should be 0.6. And this is an auto sensing uh, multimeter. So it is saying six, but it's actually 0.6 there. So that's good. And then next thing I had to do, so I've adjusted the resistors already. It would be impossible for me to show this. Uh, my hands would just be in the way if I was adjusting them otherwise. So next thing is to uh, get the voltage at that pin there, pin one, set this voltage to 4.44. So I slide the fader down until I get 4.44. Okay, 4. Point, ah, almost there. 4.44. And when I do that, the fader is sitting exactly at zero, which is what it's supposed to be, zero dB. And then um, it says to confirm that there's 2.7 eight volts output at pin one on IC 200 again. So once that's set, so really we're just setting two variable resistors and if they're working right, if everything's right, this should come out. Let's see. Uh, it's coming out. Oh, that one says 2.78, but the other one actually says, make sure it's 4.36. So now I've got neither of those. 
So now I'm back to not being sure because I had this coming out at 2.78 before. So maybe I'll try that again. Okay, so that's as far as I've gotten to date. Uh, we're approaching the end of August, early September is coming, and uh, I'm hoping to get this thing into the studio before the end of September. What I've got on the go now is there's a fellow in Nanaimo, just an hour north of me, who also happens to have one of these boards that he inherited, and he is planning to sell it. He happens to have the extender cards. So I'm going to go up there next week and meet with him and help him do some testing on his board to make sure it's uh, functioning well enough to tell people that it's functioning for his sale. And he's going to loan me the extender card so I can finish doing my testing. Uh, the next step in the process, though, is harmonic distortion testing. So I need a, har a harmonic distortion analyzer, which I do not yet have. So either I'll have to see if one of my techs can loan me one, uh, put that together with a computer software or find one that's not a thousand bucks because I haven't been able to find a cheap one yet. I want to give a shout out to uh, Mickey and Pierre and Zach who have all assisted me uh, on the technical side of this. Uh, I've got you know people uh, internationally now helping me with this project and um, you know I hit that point uh, about a week ago where I was starting to get to the frustration level of how long this was taking and started thinking maybe this is really a bad idea maybe I should stick with my digital mixer for now look at getting a smaller trident or something more modern in the future when I can afford it and not bother putting this in but after talking with Zach and after talking with my buddy Ian uh, both of them have seriously convinced me that this board is going to be glorious sounding so I'm quite looking forward to at least trying it. I'll go through the process. I'll resolder everything. I'll use it for, let's say, six months to a year. And if I am not getting love out of it uh, from, from uh, uh, some solid use and uh, putting some bands through it, um, then I guess I'll move it along. But uh, everybody tells me this is one of the most wonderful sounding boards. Uh, I think I'll do a video maybe after I get it in the studio on the history of the MXP 3036 and Sony's takeover of MCI and uh, anything I might have gleaned about this um, console since uh, working on it because I've done a lot of research, I've talked to a lot of people and it's kind of a fascinating piece of audio history uh, that seems to be little known, little documented and apparently is quite, quite wonderful. I guess time will tell. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be back when I'm back with the newer update. Uh, hopefully some other videos in the meantime. Take care.